it's Reno here for Planet Reno, my YouTube channel, and uh, right now we're going to do a little video intro for uh, one of my favorite interviews I've gotten to do so far because uh, it was just such a, an honor and a privilege to get to speak with uh, Pamela Moore. Of course, everyone knows her, all you Queensryche fans out there, all you fans of uh, metal and, and hair metal, whatever you want to call it, uh, know her as uh, Sister Mary from uh, Queensryche's Operation Mind Crime, and she has uh, a new album out. Of course, it came out uh, in May, and this interview is from back in May. I believe May 20th is uh, when we actually did the uh, interview for Big Hair Saturday Night, but uh, just now getting around to doing, I've been just so busy uh, with other interviews and uh, and working on getting Big Hair going uh, with some uh, some giveaways and stuff like that, and my day job doing afternoon drive on was that, uh, now finally now getting really, uh, really into, uh, back into doing some stuff with the, the YouTube channel, so uh, there'll be more on the way, but uh, she's got the new album, Resurrect Me, which uh, just an amazing album, and we got to talk uh, at length about the album, about her time with Queensryche, uh, even her thoughts on the uh, the Queensryche split between Jeff and the other guys. So a uh, really fun interview and just, uh, you know, as beautiful as she is on the cover, uh, just as beautiful a person. She's a really, real sweetheart, uh, real fun to talk to, and, uh, you know, just one of my favorite interviews because uh, it was such an easy interview to do because it was just like, you know, two two old friends talking, you know, and uh, this is the first time we ever talked to it. So it was a lot of fun to do this interview and uh, one of my favorites, as I said. So uh, here it is. This is my interview with none other than Sister Mary, Pamela Moore. Hey, it's Reno for Big Hair Saturday Night and on the phone. Uh, it's my extreme pleasure to have none other than uh, Sister Mary from Queensryche's uh, Operation Mind Crime. Pamela Moore, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's nice to be here with you. Hey, thanks for uh, taking the time to talk to us. And of course, you've got sure. the new album out. Uh, came out last week, uh, Resurrect Me. Yep, it sure did. Have you heard it? Oh, I've got it. I've got it in my hands now. I've been listening for uh, probably the past. Uh, I got the advanced copy, so I've been listening for like the past, I don't know, two or three weeks now. Just oh. love it. Oh, I'm I'm happy. That's <laughs> great to know. Yeah, it's it, probably for me uh, one of the best albums I've heard come out this year so far, and I, I think I have a hard time believing anyone's going to top it because it just. Uh, was really good. Tell, tell everyone about uh, just the process of how this album came about. Uh, well, it took a little bit longer than we were expecting, and the only reason for that was, uh, you know, I I moved from Chicago back to my hometown in Seattle, and I was in the middle of doing some tours with Primal Fear and, you know, just kind of life situations. But um, it took about four years to make. Um, the major collaborator with me on this album is a gentleman named Michael Posh, and he's an excellent guitar player, and he also played a lot of the instruments that are on there as well, except for the drums. And uh, he and I, we just, I, he was working with me in a, a version of Pamela Moore that I had a few years ago out in Chicago, so he was one of my guitar players, and he wrote this really beautiful opening piece for the show and I approached him because I was wanting to get this next album up and going and I approached him and asked him you know did such a great job on this piece well, you know do you want to maybe try to see what it would be like to co-write together and you know he stuck through it through my move and everything and we just kind of sent files back and forth the beauty of the internet and the rest is history and now it's called resurrect me and it's it i I'm really, I'm really happy with it. It's the album I've always wanted to create, and it's powerful and and tender sometimes. And you know, I, I I'm really happy with how it came out. Yeah, I was gonna say that's one of the things I love about it because it's so you know, it, it in some parts it's just so heavy, and then in other parts they're they're delicate pieces, uh, whether it be your vocal work or, or in the the music itself, and. Uh, uh, really, it's such an enjoyable album to listen to. Uh, uh, what's because you've been, you know, you've been recording for for many years now. Uh, if people aren't aware of it, uh, what, how would you compare this album to, you know, some of your other solo projects and other projects uh, you've done? Yeah, this is much heavier. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like you said. This is the album I always wanted to write, and you know, Michael was my uh, secret ingredient. I think I think. 
a big deal is that he's a he's a guitar player, and I really love metal guitar. I really mm-hmm. love the sound, and of course, you know, people associate me with the you know rock scene, and and lovingly so, I accept the Sister Mary uh, role, um, and so. It, it, for my fan base, they're going to really enjoy this one as opposed to an album that was released that I did in 2006. And that record, sonically, it's just beautiful record, but it's just very um, atmospheric and it's not heavy like this one is. Um, and I've done some other releases as well. Um, which I was guest singer on a lot of different things too, but this one's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can understand that. Uh, it's, uh, one of the things I loved about it was, you know, uh, your work with Michael was really, it, it almost seemed like uh, catching lightning in a bottle because uh, just, uh, like you said, it's it's so heavy. And uh, and you kind of touched on it, you know, the embracing the Sister Mary thing. How was it like back then, back in 88 when, you know, Mind Crime came out and, uh, and you know, being, because I, I got to I gotta tell you, uh, I listened to that Sweet Sister Mary song probably a million times when that came out, I had the had the biggest. I hadn't even seen live crime or anything like that, but I had the biggest crush on you just from hearing you sing. Oh, that. <laughs> awesome! You know what? I'm so blessed by that whole thing, and I will carry that to to my grave of being very grateful about being handpicked for it. Um, and it's you know really afforded me the opportunity to sit down and and talk to you about my own projects, you know. Um, but the whole process, I mean, I, I had no idea that it was going to be what it turned out to be, and I don't know if the guys did either, but um, the whole process was just really cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure it was. Uh, and I, I know I've read other interviews and stuff like that, and I know you've been asked a lot about this, but I, I've got to join the club too. Uh, what was your kind of take on the whole Queensryche breaking up, uh, Jeff leaving the band, and, and that whole thing. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I guess you know, in my situation, it, they're all my family. They have been my family. I've oh. known them for over twenty-five years. You know, and I've worked with them a lot, off and on, throughout those years. And um, you know, having the opportunity uh, that I did to be able to stand right next to Jeff, and you know sing with them it was pretty amazing and it, it's really tough because what even what what's tough right now is that it 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 hurts the fans more than anything Thing, you know things are pretty polarized between the two camps as far as with the fan base and that's what's kind of sad to see but you know it, people don't like change but change brings opportunity and and uh, you know after everything settles it's it's going to all work out. It, it probably will work out even better for both parties. You never know. I just heard Jeff's version of Queensryche's new album, and it was really good. And I'm actually kind of looking forward to you know, the other guy's version of, of Queensryche because from what I've heard off of it, it's 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 really good too. So, yeah, you kind of, you know, it's you hate to see as a fan, hate to see them kind of right. separate. But, you know, that's just more great rock that's going to be put out there I guess yeah that's true someone else brought that up too they said well now we get like two but you know different types of music from the same entity you know yeah um they're always going to be artists you know and and in our situation here it's not our it's not our battle yeah um and unfortunately sometimes people take that on and I I certainly understand it I mean you know if you had something that was your baby for a long time. You wouldn't want to, you don't want to see it break up. And, and this whole thing has been kind of like a marriage breakup in a way. And, oh, yeah. and it, it's a, things will work out. Things are going to settle down, you know. Oh, yeah. Things definitely. are going to start. And they already are. I think people are moving on. People are doing what they want to do. And um, I wish them, the, both camps, the best, yeah. you know. Now, I know Jeff's doing his uh, version of Queensryche's doing the uh, 25th anniversary of Operation Mindcrime on tour. Uh, was it ever, I know I just heard that Sass Jordan's going to be doing the part of Sister Mary. Was it ever talked about or considered uh, bringing you back for that? Oh, yeah. Uh, he called me last August 
during the summer, and he had told me this whole plan that he wanted to go out with his version of Queen's Reich and do the Operation Mind Crime tour. And, you know, I've always... I've always been right next to his side yeah. and done all of that stuff, and I was really grateful that he was offering me, but I knew that I had this album coming out, you know? Yeah. And I didn't want to give him a commitment when, you know, I knew this was going <laughs> to happen, and then all of a sudden I'd have to pull out or something. So I I, I chose um, not to go out with him this, this time, which was really t- tough for me to do. Oh, but, I can imagine. Um. Yeah, I think that it's uh, it was a good choice because now I get to talk to you and, you know, I've got a band that I'm putting together. Actually, we've been rehearsing. Um, we're finding out that a lot of these songs that are on the record are really translating uh, excellent live. They just sound awesome oh, live. Great. It's funny, you know, I was, we were list- I was listening to the masters. We had it mastered. Uh, maybe a couple of times because we have to tweak a few things. But mm-hmm. I was at my uh, at the gym and I was listening to that thing. And I'm telling you, if you if there's people, your listeners out there, that work out, they should get this album <laughs> to work out. I was on the treadmill and I was running really fast. It was, and I didn't even realize it. It's just really kind of pumps you up. <laughs> so yeah, you know, now that you mention it, that is, yeah, you make a great point because I, I, I just, I, I play this and I was actually listening to this on the way into work again and I had it in the CD player in the car and just, you know, I'm just driving down the road and I'm just like really getting into it because yeah, it's such a really... I know, uh, you have to be careful you might drive too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those songs are just, just in your face. Some of them just are it's oh. it's awesome. Some oh, yeah. of them just kind of like Ew, they melt your face. <laughs> which uh, which of the songs is your favorite off this album? Well, you're that's like asking mom which <laughs> yeah, is your favorite kid, you know. <laughs> but but really, I you know it changes. I think right now I've been telling people this, but I think my my favorite right now is Awakening. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a cut on the album that Jeff Loomis is playing the solo on. Oh yeah, that's right. And um. I think that's the sleeper of the, if that's the right word to use it to describe it, because um, it it kind of, you know, gently kind of grooves along, and then all of a sudden it starts building and then building some more, and then Loomis takes off and explodes, and then it just goes into this chaotic, uh, <laughs> you know, ending, and I get to stretch out my voice a little bit on the end too. I think that one though is, I think that one's my favorite one right now. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny you mentioned that because that was one of the songs that was on as I came into work today. And I just remember oh. sitting there listening to it and thinking I'm just how one, how good the song was. But yeah, towards the end, I'm like, wow, man, she really went for it there. And it just sounds so great. Thanks. I, I know. I don't know what happened, but <laughs> <laughs> I think we were at Jeff's studio when I was putting that down and, um, and he, turned around at me and goes, where'd that come from? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <It's pretty fun. laughs> so people have to check it out and see what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, check that out. And I just watched the, uh, the video for uh, paranoia here not too long ago, which w- was really cool. I like, yeah, that. you like it. Yeah. What's your favorite song? Uh, you know, it's, it's tough because, uh, the title track resurrect me. I just love how, you know, it starts <laughs> off so soft and melodic and ends just with a real, punch Mm -hmm. but then again (laughs) breaking down uh one of the ballads off there just i don't know what it is about that i just i I like the i don't know if you want to call it intensity the underlying intensity of it but it just i I like the subject matter and just the kind of slow burn of that i love that song too i i'm i that was written by dear uh i wrote that i co-wrote that with a dear friend of mine his name is brooke lazat and we've been writing as well different kinds of stuff along that vein as well. And I wasn't going to use it for the album, but it just seemed like a perfect song to kind of clean the palette after you've been annihilated with the guitar <laughs> stuff. And um, it's very different, you know, and I, I thought that that would be just a really nice, you know, uh, what's the word for it? Yeah, I guess cleansing of the palette, palette you know, and... And it's still very intense. Oh, know? yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, uh, like I said, that's 
I awakening and that's it's funny because breaking down does come after awakening and yeah you know after you've been hit with you know the end of awakening you kind of get to <laughs> s- slow down regroup but like you said it's still uh, just a, it's such a beautiful song and of course uh, yeah. not not a bad song on the album I have to say I I can understand why it's like choosing a, a child your favorite child because uh, just they're all yeah. really good yeah they're all uh, uh, sky is falling uh, too is is one that I'm really fond of and of course. My dear friend Ralph Sheepers from Primal Fear, he shares his vocals on that. Oh yeah, that's right. That particular song and he really added a lot of muscle to that. Yeah. He's just he's got this amazing voice. He can sing as high as I can, I think, <laughs> and then you know, get down into the depths of, you know, his his uh, vocal cords, but um I was really really grateful when he agreed to uh help out on that and then he also did a lot of the background vocals too he helped with that you know it's so funny this whole album I'm thinking about it mm-hmm. you know the, the day and age of internet is is quite interesting because a lot of this album was written by sending files here and there and recorded <laughs> <laughs> and then sent over again so it's the beauty of being able to do that and work with people in different countries and you know different states so well, it's funny you mention that because, you know, with the internet these days, as far as promoting albums and stuff like that, you know, I, uh, Rat Pack Records, who, uh, put this album out, you know, I, you know, have them on Facebook and, you know, they're, they're constantly, you know, posting videos of yours or, or, mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, here's an interview and, uh, how you know how is that for an artist these days to have such a you know it used to be it was either radio or MTV where now it's you know you've got uh, so many different outlets especially with internet Facebook Twitter uh, YouTube and all that for for promoting an album like this how is it to, oh, yeah. how is it these days for for that sort of thing I it's it's amazing because you got stuff at your fingertips you know you you want to um, somebody wants to look up an artist, you can just Google them, yeah. and you'll find so much about you know different people. You can learn a lot about different people. It's kind of probably a blessing and a curse, maybe, <laughs> in some situations. But you know, also being an artist, I'm realizing even more so now than ten years ago. You have to be really creative and find new ways of being able to utilize the internet so that it is helpful for you, you know. Um, and that's one thing that Rat Pack knows how to do. I, I just adore Joe and, and the people that work for him. They're they're amazing people, and I'm so grateful to be on their, you know, label. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it kicks butt. For, for somebody that hosts a show like Big Hair Saturday Night and, and, and a DJ on a terrestrial radio station... Uh, you know, trying to to get you know in touch with record companies to get you know CDs to give away or just a CD to play. You know, a, a new artist. It's it's really tough these days. And working with Rat Pack Records from my end, yeah, it's it's a pleasure because they just they go out of their way to help promote their artists and uh, and do whatever it takes to to get you know the the songs yeah. on the air and to get you know cool interviews like this one with you. And uh, yeah, I I I really. Uh, you know, I love working with Rat Pack Records, so I, I can yeah. understand that. You know, they're redefining everything a little bit more here. You know, obviously, if you get really big, you have your your strong points, but mm. um, you know, in this in this situation, um, I really love it because they're they work for the artist. You know. So. Now, you talked about getting the band together, so I take it there's some uh, some touring plans in the works. That's what we're hoping for. Right now, I just want to make sure the van and the show is tight. Um, you know, Michael Posh was the guy that wrote almost all the music mm-hmm. on there, except for the drums. The drums were done by Chuck Mason. And um, so we can't really, you know, Michael can't really do that on his own. So yeah. we're having the band. I have some really great players, really good friends of mine that are, that have been, you know, hammering it out with me a few few nights a week, and um, like I said, they're they're sounding great. We're hoping to do a few shows here coming up in the summer, hopefully like June. And man, 
management's working on possible one-offs or shows in set specific areas and, yeah. and I mean, nothing set in stone, but definitely I've got to get this out there because it's very exciting. Oh, yeah. I, that's why I'm hoping that uh, sometime in the near future I'll see a, a tour date around here because I can't, yeah. I can't wait to see this album performed live. Oh, yeah. You're, you're going to be really happy with it because you know how sometimes you hear songs on, on, you know, a CD or a radio or something and they sound really catchy and then you go hear them and something's wrong yeah. or, or vice versa. Maybe maybe the band sounds better than the live version than, you know, yeah. the album. But I, I I really feel strongly that, that these songs are going to sound just like the <laughs> album and I'm pretty excited about that. Excellent. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, for taking the time to talk to us and for anyone out there, do yourself a favor, pick up the new CD from Pamela Moore, Resurrect Me, go to uh, iTunes or Amazon or, or, or wherever you go to get CDs or, or your downloads uh, because this is, like I said, one of the yeah, best and pay, albums. Yeah, and pay for it too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's exactly. That's one thing we are talking about. It's like, wait a minute. I think there's some website out there that already has something up, and it's just like, that's not fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> you know? that's one of the things that it really, uh, you know, artists work so hard, and it's, it's, I think it's unfair to call yourself a fan and to, you know, not pay for what they're putting out there, taking the time and put their heart and soul yeah. into. And, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely pay for it. Yeah, please. <laughs> it's not that expensive. <laughs> well, definitely. Thank you so much for the time with you. I really appreciate this. And uh, maybe I can meet you one day. In yeah, person. I hope so. Hope so. Hopefully we'll get to see you sometime here in the near future. But, uh, like I said, everyone needs to pick up this album. Best of, best of 2013 so far in my uh, mind. Thank you very much. All right, so there you have it. That's my interview with uh, Pamela Moore, all about her latest album, Resurrect Me. Uh, go pick up a copy of it. And as Pamela said, please buy it. Don't steal it. Don't... Uh, don't download it illegally, uh, which, you know, you want to support good rock and roll. And that's really, this day and age, it's hard to find good rock and roll out there because so much of what the record companies are pushing, all the big record companies, uh, you know, it's the formulaic crap that I just, I can't take. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of good rock and roll out there. You can find them on the, uh, a lot of the independent record labels. And uh, it's, it's out there, like Pamela Moore's Resurrect Me on Rat Pack Records. Uh, check it out. Go to uh, ratpackrecords.com uh, and uh, and you can purchase this CD or, or wherever you buy your uh, digital downloads, whether it be iTunes or Amazon. Uh, check it out and uh, do uh, pick up a copy of Pamela Moore's Resurrect Me. Uh, it's a really cool album. Uh, one of my favorites of a 2013. And, and, you know, as I was telling Pamela, uh, for my money right now, one of the best, if not the best album to come out so far in 2013. So I uh, uh, hope you'll really enjoy the uh, interview and uh, more to come. And of course, uh, be looking for my uh, review of Pamela Moore's Resurrect Me coming soon on Planet Reno.